The Blue T EB3A is a feature packed power solution that seems to have included everything but the kitchen sink in it. Not only does it provide up to 1200 watts of surge capacity, but the sheer versatility on offer here makes it one of the more feature packed units I've tested. From its wireless charging to its super bright LED flashlight, there are things this Blue T EB3A device did I didn't know I needed until I used them. It also packs fast dual charging capabilities so you can charge it with both AC and solar at the same time. The Blue Yeti EB3A packs a 268 watt per hour battery, meaning you can basically charge everything on it. The various ports also provide ample room to charge multiple devices at once. But beyond charging, the unit can also power certain technologies such as TVs and even video game consoles. There's also full app integration which allows you to monitor the device and tweak certain settings and ports. The Blue Yeti EB3A can also be charged in multiple ways too, six ways to be exact. There's AC, solar, car charging, generator, AC and solar, and AC and adapter. It is also a pure sign inverter, which should be obvious by now. It also uses LFP4 batteries inside, which promises up to 2,500 cycles of up to 80% charge before they start to degrade. That is basically a lifespan of seven years if you empty it and charge it up once per day. On max charge, the unit can also go from 0 to 80% in just 30 minutes. So how does this all weigh up and exactly how far can the Blue T EB3A take you during load shedding? I wanted to test out the inverter under certain conditions to see just how powerful the unit actually is. The Blue T EB3A is a lightweight UPS and only weighs 4.6 kilograms. In terms of dimensions, it is 255mm long, 180mm wide and 183mm tall. When you purchase one, you'll get the unit neatly snugged away in a box alongside an instruction manual and charging cables. Given this unit can be charged with both AC and solar, it packs cables for both. The unit itself is all business on the front. Here you'll find all the knobs and buttons and ports you need to use it. There's a DC output port above two DC5521 outlets. There's also two USB-A ports rated at 5 volts 3 amps. Next to that you'll find a USB-C port rated at 100 watts. At the bottom there's the charging AC port that maxes out at 350 watts. There's also the 12 to 18 volt DC input for solar charging. There's also a handy flashlight on this unit which is super helpful. I didn't know I even needed a flashlight on my UPS until I turned this on and saw how bright it was. Lastly and likely the most important port on this is the 3 prong output port rated at 600 watts. There's no 2 prong port on this unit so you'll need to use an adapter so keep that in mind. Then on the top you'll find the carry handle and a wireless charging pad. This is rated at 15 watts. This is another helpful option I didn't think I needed until I used it. Each section is also powered by a button that has a green LED light on it. This indicates the section is turned on. All of this is pretty easy to understand and makes the unit incredibly approachable. The main display on the unit is also a great place to see everything at once. It shows the remaining battery, how long it will last and what input and output you are receiving. Apart from that, the Blue T EB3A is a black box. I do like the pyramid designs on the side. I also think some of the ports could have been moved to the back for a cleaner look. Perhaps the charging ports at the back and the output ports on the front, just to help declutter things when you have more than one thing plugged in this device at once. I did enjoy how small the unit was. Sure, it is not as robust as other UPS units I've tested recently, and if anything, the one with the smallest battery, but it is a fast little box that doesn't disappoint on ports and features. The first thing you'll want to do is download the Blue T app. This gives you access to the unit and lets you tweak various settings without ever touching the device itself. Setting this up was fairly simple. Once the unit was powered on, the app simply picked it up and I was able to access the settings. Unfortunately, the unit doesn't have any Wi-Fi, so you'll need to be within 10 meters of the unit to access the app. If you do use the app, it shows you all sorts of useful information, including what outputs are enabled, how much power they are using, as well as the charging time, battery life, and the remaining time. 
I was a bit disappointed to see that the unit didn't support Wi-Fi. It would have enabled so many more features, including remote control access from a different location. For example, I could increase the charge rate of the unit when I wasn't at home to prepare for increased load shedding stages. Speaking of charging, the unit takes around 2 hours to go from completely empty to 100%. When set at the max 350 watts of charge through AC, the fan also reached the max noise level of 48 decibels. This isn't very loud which is great news. Keep in mind that the charge time can also be increased if you combine both AC and solar. But it might be a cumbersome setup to get going. An extra 100 watts of power won't change much. You might as well just leave it on AC and wait the extra time. So what about the performance of the unit? While the EB3A has definitely been designed for backup scenarios and for people who don't have large TVs and high energy tech. For a great scenario, this Blue Yeti EB3A would be the perfect companion for someone who has a 50 to 65 inch TV and just wants to binge Netflix during load shedding. But you can push the device further, it just won't last as long. I tested the unit under a range of different scenarios. The most common setup in a household is a 55 inch TV connected to a modem and one lamp. In this case, the Blue Yeti EB3A lasted around 2.5 hours. I could increase this by enabling an energy saving mode on the TV, which extended the battery life of the unit to over 5 hours. If you don't want to miss out on gaming while load shedding, the Blue T EB3A can also help you, but it isn't exactly the best solution. In this case, you'll definitely want to enable the power saving mode on your TV to help reduce the consumption. Both the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S use 230 watts of power and combine that with your TV and you're likely getting close to 400 watts. With this in mind, you can game for just over an hour and a bit longer by skimping on the TV backlight. I would recommend using a monitor if you have one around as they use a lot less power. My 32 inch MSR Optics monitor only uses 30 watts of power which is definitely better than the 280 watts that my TV uses. Of course, if you use a PC, this is a whole different story, and it all depends on your components. My PC draws 400 watts of power alone, so add that to the TV and it reaches close to 600 watts of power. Here, we're really maxing out the Blue T EB3A and it won't last at all. The Nintendo Switch then is a different story. The console uses a measly 8 watts of power on the max. This will barely make a dent in the Blue T EB3A, so if you're load shedding, maybe finish up Tears of the Kingdom first. I suggest you do that instead of trying to play Starfield on your gaming PC. But where the Blue T EB3A does shine is its versatility for other devices. It is a helpful charging box that can charge anything. The wireless charging is also great and the USB ports mean you can charge whatever you need to. I often just use them to charge my watch and my power banks are needed on the go. The device does offer a surge of up to 1200 watts, but it still doesn't do much when the battery capacity is limited to 268 watts per hour. A kettle won't boil, the hairdryer didn't turn on, and you won't use this to power your fridge. It is made for certain scenarios where you need a bit of power here and there. TV watching is definitely a win here and completely possible. The Blue T EB3A might not be the biggest and most robust power solution I've ever used, but I think there's a lot of people out there looking for something affordable just to power a TV lamp and a modem for 2 hours a day. This is the product you should look for. For A999, it is a lot cheaper than even your most basic cell battery inverters, and the LFP batteries will last a long time, but be sure to keep its limitations in mind too. So those are my thoughts and experiences with the Blue T EB3A. Huge thanks to the brand for sending this through to me for review. As always, thanks for popping by and giving this a watch. Please do consider liking and subscribing for more future content like this. Also visit www.glitch.online for more gaming, tech news and reviews. Until next time, farewell.